Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Hazel Rodham, and I welcome you all to this broadcast. Firstly, I would like to give huge thanks to the RCSLT events team for their superb management and hosting of this broadcast today. They are on hand. If you have any requests for technical assistance, please use the chat button. We won't be using the Q&A function today, only the chat button. Uh, they will help you, um, uh, certainly. And just a reminder that this is a broadcast announcement. We won't be taking questions or responding to questions today, but we do look forward to inviting you all to join us in our series of upcoming broadcasts, which will be interactive discussion forums uh, to be able to look in much more depth at our strategic visions, aims and objectives, and to have those as listening events and discussion events with many stakeholders. Now in the chat box now, you will see a link where you can register if you wish to have advanced notification and direct invitations to join those uh, upcoming events. That link will also be um, posted onto the Health Education England new web pages. The new web pages from Health Education England for research and innovation for allied health professionals will go live after the end of this broadcast. So we will be publicizing the link, the direct link for that new website. Um, and that will also be posted in the chat at the end of today's presentations. If you are on social media, please join us by using the hashtag that we are promoting for this strategy. Uh, it's hashtag AHP research. Please use that now and share that with colleagues. That would be great. Thank you. So I'm delighted to uh, announce our speakers today. Between us, we are going to present and introduce to you the importance and significance of this strategy to give a brief overview of what's in the strategy and invite you all to, to look at the strategy in full, discuss it with us and continue the conversation. At the end of the broadcast, Suzanne will return online and she will be able to uh, make announcements about the immediate upcoming events. <clears throat> so, I'm delighted, it's a great honour for me to be able to introduce to you Suzanne Rastrick, who is the Chief Allied Health Professions Officer for England. Thank you, Suzanne. Good morning, Hazel, and good morning, colleagues. I'm really genuinely very delighted to be with you today. And also thank you for your interest in the research launch that we, we have. And I think it's highly significant that we reached capacity of a thousand registrations within two weeks of the launch. I think that says a, a great deal about the salient significance and timeliness of this event, especially at a time when everyone, all of us, are facing such critical demands and priorities upon our time. So we're really grateful for you joining today. Also, I'd like to pay tribute to my colleagues in the professional bodies, and I've seen in the chat already, we've got colleagues from pretty much every corner of England, from Cornwall to Cumbria, and across the East Coast down to London and the South East attending. And also partners from other parts of the health service, also social care and education, and I know many of my uh, educationalist colleagues are here today. We've also got colleagues from a wide range of international sources here, and we're really delighted to welcome colleagues, particularly from uh, Germany's first federal funded university for healthcare, and also across all time zones in Australia, where I, I and indeed Hazel have a number of connections. And colleagues there are particularly active also in seeking interest and support for HP research and innovation. I'd also like to extend a very warm welcome to my counterpart, Chief Allied Health Professions Officers for the devolved administrations, who are also hoping to, to join us on the call today. But I'd like to pay particular thanks to Hazel for leading and coordinating this work, co-joint with the Council for Allied Health Professions Research, and to Beverly Harden for commissioning it through Health Education England, and particularly to the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapy, who are hosting this broadcast for us today. Um, as Hazel mentioned, we will be at the end be noting that the recording will be posted on the Health Education England website 
<clears throat> and we'll be sharing the direct link with you right at the end of the broadcast this morning. My job here today is really to uh, welcome you to the broadcast event, but also um, to set the context for you in terms of the, the broader picture in England in which Allied Health operates. Next slide, please. So in terms of Allied Health in England, the AHP professions are, there are 14 in England, uh, slightly different in the other home countries in the UK, and there are around 180,000 of us now. Um, and that includes all 14 of the professions, and you'll see a number here in the infographics. And I'm hugely proud to represent all of you. And from my perspective, my role covers the Department of Health and Social Care. I'm the principal advisor to the government on Allied Health Matters. And it also covers the arm's length bodies from government. So NHS England and Improvement, Health Education England, and now the Office for Health Improvement and Disparities, which was Public Health England. And our community, as I describe it at Allied Health, which is represented by our little icon badge, includes not just registered professionals, but our students, our next generation, and clearly our support workers too. So for me, that community is really important and is embraced in this strategy. So to give you the, the first context slide, this uh, next slide came from 2013, not long after NHS England was formed, and it was clearly seen as a backbone in terms of research, that research was everybody's business. But clearly, sometimes those risks are that that becomes a slogan. It isn't uh, everybody's business. And we need to drive and enable this agenda for allied health professionals to ensure that reality is actually the fact. So in terms of the next driver, uh, this is around the, the long-term plan, which in England underpins the strategic direction of uh, health and indeed care services, and was published in 2019. And from my perspective, this is the primary context for all of us in the NHS. And it's important to acknowledge the long-term plan as one of the key drivers in underpinning uh, the development of our next AHP strategy, which I'll be talking about later, which includes the importance of research. And the strategy we're launching today will be a key enabler in delivering that ambition. So in terms of AHP specific context, you'll be aware that this is our current strategy, which was published in 2017. And it's essential that research and innovation should impact on practice and care quality. And clearly the current strategy here, AHPs into action, the collective commitments and priorities sought in that document enable all AHPs to demonstrate that their practice is both evidence-based and values-based, i.e. person-centered. So hence, research is absolutely implicit as one of the four impacts that you see here in AHPs into action. And this strategy has been refreshed and many of you will have participated in that during the last year. And I shall refer to that in the upcoming broadcast and really in relation to the new strategy and the detail. So finally, from me in terms of context, most recently uh, last year, the uh, government uh, Inter interestingly decided to uh, publish this direction from the uh, Department of Health and Social Care, which demonstrated their commitment for research delivery to roles that uh, ensure care quality. And we've already begun to see some AHPs being appointed to these delivery roles. And we welcome the additional opportunities for the AHP workforce to participate in the research environment to gain skills and confidence in the research process and to contribute to the collective evidence base uh, for excellence in care. And within the scope of the new AHP research and innovation strategy being presented to you here today, you will note that our strategic purpose has been to align with all of these significant agenda documents which I've mentioned. And you'll also hear about the breadth of the vision for our new strategy to achieve transformational change in all four domains that are encompassed in the scope of it. So I hope that context has been useful in giving you a sense of uh, where this launch today sits in terms of the policy landscape in England. And I'd now like to introduce Beverly Harden, who is the AHP lead in Health Education England and one of the Deputy Chief AHP Officers for England. Bev, over to you. Thank you, Suzanne. I really appreciate that. Um, welcome, everybody. I am so delighted to be here. And I want to start by absolutely recognising the exceptional leadership that Hazel has offered this piece of work. We have an incredible allied health professions community 
and an incredible allied health professions research community. And the group have really, really come together across all aspects of what we do, professional bodies, colleagues in practice, Hazel has been everywhere, I think, and talked to everybody, and it's wonderful. And those who haven't been talked to yet, don't worry, she's got a year of talking to you ahead, so nobody will leave untouched by Hazel's um, leadership and, and thinking. So thank you so much indeed, everybody, for what you've done. Um, a thousand people here today shows us really clearly how we are um, positioning in this work, that this is central to all that we do. Next slide, please, Hazel, if you wouldn't mind, that would be great. And the role that I have in, in Health Education England is to really drive that 21st century workforce that will look after you and I in our dotage, but will drive safe, sustainable, effective healthcare services for our populations across health, care, and all aspects of where LAAHPs land and weave their magic. And so we've got our four pillars of practice of which research is absolutely woven through everything we do as a golden thread. And the magic of Hazel's positioning here of research and innovation the work that Carrie and Caroline have led across the country with us too really has enabled people to see the whole remit of what our curiosity, our research-based, innovation-based thinking looks like. So again, delighted that this fits absolutely in driving 21st century healthcare. Next slide, please, Hazel. And the other side of my role, um, as I lead the multi-professional, so everybody other than doctors and dentists, everybody's ability to advance their practice, to advance and consultant practice status. And of course, research fundamental in that um, advancement of practice. And the magic for us is a lot of the work that we're doing with, with Hazel and AHP and, and Joy working for me within the allied health, say the advanced practice community, is working with multi-professional colleagues to really start to articulate what it looks like to be either a career researcher or somebody working within research to be able to absolutely drive the world-class research that we have available to us in England for the allied health professions driven by allied health professions. The issue is we want more, we want more equity in people's ability to be in that space with us. So both aspects of my portfolio really do drive the central heart of what we are trying to achieve in this strategy. Next slide, please, Hazel. And the partnership working for us really does reach across our whole community. Professional bodies have been absolutely instrumental in the work we do together but also Councillor Deans for Health um, have been with us from the beginning and a huge thanks to Robin and the team for what they've done and the great work they leave for us with our academic workforce, embedding clearly research in all aspects of, of how we drive the education, training and the research communities in academia and the fabulous work mirrored by the work that David Marsden is doing with us around clinical placements of saying actually our research journey is everywhere in our AHP workforce. Students in learning, clearly being exposed um, to research being a clear expectation. Innovation projects now the mainstay in programmes of education training. Wonderful to see. And our valued support workforce, clearly key part of our research machinery in how we support and drive meaningful research questions that drive changes to practice, improve care for populations and enable us to offer our most cost effective evidence based interventions with and for people. Next slide, please, Hazel. And we, we are so delighted in the fact that we have CAPA, a fantastic organisation, absolutely wrapped around this work, like words through a stick of rock, clearly the key vehicle for the delivery of all of our ambition and, and key architects in the creation of that vision. So thanks to, to Dawn and to Kate and the team, really lovely to see our work starting to take shape and come together and for us being able to drive relationships across the board. With Hazel, we have met with colleagues across NIHR, Ruth Endicott and Anne Rickey, and have been incredibly helpful to us in really thinking through how we support underrepresented groups to really drive the equity of our ability to overcome some of the historical challenges we've had to sustainability of funding, access to funding, and it's seen by everybody. There's not anybody that we spoke that does not see the opportunity of the allied health professions work and the work Hazel has done to weave everything together is quite exceptional for us in being able to view what the next steps look like and how as we move forwards into our next strategy as Suzanne launches our new strategy for AHPs, our strategy for research, that as we move forward as an allied health professions community, we leave nobody behind. We put patients at the centre of what we do, populations at the centre of what we do, people at the centre of what we do, we drive change with research and innovation central to everything we do. 
Hazel, thank you for your leadership. So grateful in everything you've done and your friendship and your support of this work. Next slide, please. And I think seamlessly, unless Hazel's just had the same problem that I've had, which is a power cut, which meant I lost my Wi-Fi till two minutes beforehand. Ah, Hazel is in the building. I'd like to hand over to you, Hazel, with enormous thanks for your leadership. Thank you, Beverly. That, that was a, a marvellous introduction. Um, I'm delighted to, uh, to be here. Made a choice this morning to wear the same blouse as on the publicity photo so that people can recognise me. And what I'm going to do in this part of, of my uh, section of the presentation today is just give a, a, a rapid overview of the development of this strategy and to highlight our strategic visions and then to invite you all to be able to read the, the full document uh, and come back and engage in those discussions with us. So I do need to comment that this is a global priority agenda. It is not unique to Allied Health. Um, the first part of the work, which was really important, was an extensive uh, it review of international publications um, about building research capacity and capability. So we've looked internationally, we've looked outside allied health, and that has given us a sound foundation for moving forward and developing this strategy. The strategy that we have here today that we're presenting applies to all our AHP workforce community. As Suzanne uh, introduced, this includes our, our colleagues who work in all sectors, all job roles, including current students and our support workers, and at all career stages. So it's really important that uh, the, the breadth is there, and that's the message that we're conveying. This is not for an elite interest uh, in research, this applies to, to everybody. And why is the publication of this strategy time critical? Why now? As Beverly's explained, we need to accelerate the pace, the stability, the sustainability of our allied health research and innovation. That's crucial. We need to align with timely, multiple strategic national agendas. And Beverly and Suzanne have both explained that too. So we also need a definitive position statement that will encompass all the pre-existing research strategies for allied health professions within professional associations, regionally, nationally. There are many position statements, but what we're presenting today will be a definitive statement that will be a reference point that will help us to be able to map our progress from this point onwards and to support, importantly, our strategic goals. I'm delighted to say that this has been a, a genuine and authentic co-production process with all the 14 AHP associations and with the Council for Allied Health Professions Research and the Council of Deans of Health, uh, giving us huge support in this. It's been an iterative process over the last year it's been uh, a, a, a process of full engagement and ownership and I'm delighted to say that we have unhesitating consensus on the strategic aims and objectives that were developed through this process. And who else have we consulted with? As Beverly says, I've been very busy speaking to a lot of people and I'm delighted that everyone has welcomed these conversations wholeheartedly. It is a timely and an important agenda that everyone uh, acknowledges. And that's great, but what we need is for the strategy to make a difference, not, not only for people to agree uh, with what we're saying. So these conversations, as Beverly said, have been nationally and internationally held within and outside Allied Health. We hope that we've been able to encompass uh, many voices in this and to reach the strategic aims and objectives that are, are being presented now. It's important though to mention how we define research and innovation. We are very clear that this is a, a really inclusive approach of all, uh, uh, all strategies, all systems, all approaches that are driven by improving uh, the care quality, effectiveness and safety, but also acknowledging the recognition of health inequalities in access to services um, and outcomes. 
So for services across health, social care, uh, well-being, we are being inclusive. We're also considering sustainability of services for the future. We are looking to span the historic gap between research and practice communities. Our, our vision is to accelerate the cycle of implementing highest quality research to impact on service delivery. And we're going to do that by more closely than more powerfully than ever before, integrating leadership from all spheres, from the expertise of practice and from uh, academic research. We need everyone to work together and we need to emphasize that this is not an elitist activity, it is everybody's business. Research is not a bolt on luxury, research and innovation are integral to everything that we do. So the scope of this strategy, this is a broad scope, as we said, and we're presenting this conceptually as four domains. We think it is helpful to specify capacity. Building research and innovation capacity is about engagement in the wider workforce for everyone in the community to implement research and innovation in practice. But to enable that, we need to develop capability in individuals and that's for them to have skills and confidence to be able to undertake and achieve excellence in research and innovation. And that means in a wide range of activities at all career stages, also in dedicated roles and in career routes. And that encompasses fast tracking uh, careers into leadership for the highest achievers of which we have many. Context is important. This is about us as the collective allied health community to have equitable access to sustainable support, infrastructures, investment for research and innovation. And culture, slightly distinct from, uh, it is distinct from the context, it's, it's harder to measure, it's more ephemeral. It's about perceptions and expectations of professional identities and roles that research and innovation is integral and fundamental. It's everybody's business. So our strategic vision statements, we have three. We've, we've condensed everything to be concise and articulated in terms of uh, these four domains, but it's our clear intention through these strategic vision statements to accelerate the pace of change the transformation that we're seeking, but in a way which is achievable and measurable within a framework of appropriate evaluation approaches. Our focus is on quality and on achieving impact, impact on care. So in turn, I'm going to introduce to you our three vision statements. Each of these is underpinned by strategic aims, and a number of strategic objectives. So firstly, vision statement one, transformation of allied health professional identities, culture and roles. We've got three strategic aims here. Uh, these are going to enable us to be able to optimize, maximize the research and innovation skills that we have in our AHP workforce especially to support the postdoctoral individuals so that we can ensure that their skills are able to uh, enhance service improvement and achieve this impact on quality of care. These strategic aims also encompass um, many, many objectives and strategies to meet those objectives through developing role models, champions, knowledge transfer roles and to develop careers uh, for individuals, particularly fast-tracking our high achievers, but at every level and career stage, to be able to have pathways and routes for people to be able to flexibly access support to undertake activities that are needed in their setting at that time. Our vision statement to delivery of excellence in evidence-based allied health practice. 
Now then, this is really crucial. To be able to uh, deliver excellence and quality, we need to have the world leading quality research and knowledge base, but we need to ensure that gets into practice. So here we want to establish and maintain this uh, quality agenda, not only looking at the, the volume of the evidence base or counting the number of research active individuals, but it's about focusing on application into care services and to be able to engage that more powerful dialogue than ever before between these two worlds of expertise and leadership in clinical uh, areas, healthcare areas, divert service development areas, and with our academic partners. This is going to require commitment on all sides and that will be driven by being able to demonstrate that we are meeting strategic priorities from all those respective stakeholders. Our strategic vision statement number three. The national strategic research agendas and priorities to be explicitly inclusive of allied health research and innovation. We want to secure the recognition of the value and the contribution of our allied health research and innovation in relation to national strategic agendas. And this is going to be reflected in substantial and sustainable, sustainable resulting for us to have a critical mass and a legacy of leadership in research and innovation. So this is going to include more um, commitment to joint clinical academic appointments and through those to uh, demonstrate the impact and the benefit that we can achieve. That will be in line with all our stakeholders respective strategic priorities from care provider organisations and the academic sector. What I would like to point you to when you're looking at the full document on our website, on the health education website, is to see the supplementary case examples which we've already populated there to show the, uh, the, the power uh, of what can be achieved through these types of approaches. We will be adding to those case studies during the year uh, with even further examples of good practice of how this can be achieved. So the strategic aims, which again we look forward to discussing in more detail in our upcoming events, to achieve this investment. And this investment will go across the whole spectrum, from seed corn funding, from a number of sponsors uh, and partnerships, up to the, the um, absolute pinnacle of program research at world leading quality. All our strategic aims and objectives are mapped, as I said, against relevant metrics and evaluation approaches with a focus on quality and on impact. So, Leading into where do we go from now, we have strategic vision, but we need to ensure that we have impact. So we have a, a clear implementation plan for this strategy. And we're calling this campaign our continue conversation, inviting all our stakeholders to join with us in these conversations. Um, I'm going to show you in a moment our, our events calendar um, for this. I've already made reference to some upcoming discussion, online discussion forums. These will be um, a series of collaborative consultations focusing much more in depth on our strategic aims and our strategic objectives. We want to engage in conversations um, and we will be also presenting supplementary resources to support those three distinctive uh, strategic visions. So the strategic supplementary resources will include additional case studies and examples and also bibliographies and selected resources of publications specifically intended to um, make access to useful, valuable resources for our practitioners, busy practitioners. Uh, the driver is to provide access to relevant, directly relevant, research and policy publications 
uh, to enable and facilitate these conversations. If you are watching this broadcast and wish to uh, register your interest in having advanced notification of these upcoming uh, online discussion forums and about other consultation events and news, then you have the opportunity to uh, submit that uh, request to receive those direct emails. That link will also be posted on the Health Education England website together with the recording of this broadcast. We need a starting point. We need accurate intelligence uh, of a baseline of where, where are we now using the evaluation frameworks that we've devised. So that work will be rolled out. It has already started. We've begun these conversations uh, about how we're going to do that. Though we are looking forward to being able to celebrate a year from now. We want to make the, the, the point that change, organisational change, needs time. We're looking at a, a three to five year um, view of being able to measure impact. But nonetheless, we want to celebrate our start in that process a year from now with a year on reflection event. There will be a mid-year review in 2022 to be able to share news of the progress in the initial implementation. But let me tell you just for a moment about the delivery approach for this implementation plan. With ongoing oversight, thanks to Health Education England and support from, from Beverly, this will continue to be a very, very open and transparent uh, co-production process with all our 14 allied health professional associations. We'll be looking at national, regional, local levels, uh, developing new networks and maximising access to existing uh, networks that are really valuable for us. We'll be continuing to align and be responsive to the landscape in terms of uh, uh, strategic important agendas that are relevant to, to this and to all our stakeholders. As Beverly announced, I am delighted to confirm that the, the CAPA, the Council for Allied Health Professions Research uh, Str Strategy Board, has convened a core team to help work on this together with us. So here I'm able to introduce them to you. We have Professor Dawn Kant. She is the chair of the Strategy Board. Professor Kate Grafton and Dr Richard Collins, who uh, are each vice chairs of the National Strategy Board. Dr Matt Liston, he is um, representing the um, Charter Society of Physiotherapy as their research lead on the Council for Allied Health Professions uh, Strategy Board. Harriet Shannon and Ruth Strudwick. Between them, they are chair and vice chair of the CAPA's Regional Hub Forum. So they coordinate and lead the direction of CAPA's uh, nationwide network of hubs who also work in consortia to uh, support the practitioners on the ground and to facilitate um, signposting and uh, introductions to be able to help people on their careers to answer questions and to support implementation of research into practice. So here, our calendar for the year ahead, based on our three strategic visions and following today's launch, we will be announcing within the next couple of weeks, clear dates so that you can get them into your calendar and plan to join us for our in-depth discussions around each of our strategic aims in turn. We'll then be announcing and sharing news after our progress review mid-year in the summer, and we'll be announcing our reflection event arrangements to celebrate one full year when we get to January 2023. We look forward to having a resounding engagement in all these events in the same way that we've seen this wonderful surge of support, interest and engagement for today's announcement and the launch of the full strategy document. There are other events which are coming up um, very soon, including a, a whole range of um, presentations about this strategy 
and our collaborative uh, presentations with other stakeholders and partners. So the Council of Deans of Health are running a, a month long focus on research uh, for all their uh, professional uh, colleagues um, and associations and disciplines. We are delighted to be hosting one of their broadcasts, which is on the 17th of February, and that will focus specifically on building research careers. So there's still time to register and to look at their website for their other events as well. And I would like to very proudly um, make this announcement that we are delighted on behalf of Health Education England to share the news that we've had huge support from the National Institute for Health Research, the NIHR Academy, to help us develop plans for addressing the inequalities um, across our allied health disciplines. We are pursuing equality of access and support for all our allied health professional colleagues to uh, be able to progress in this agenda for research and innovation. So we'll shortly be able to share more detailed information about this upcoming project that we are so pleased and looking forward to, to be able to access the expertise and guidance from the NIHR Institute. Uh, sorry, to me. So it now gives me great pleasure to hand back to uh, Suzanne Rastrick, our Chief Allied Health, Health Professions Officer, to close our broadcast and just uh, remind you of what is coming next. Thank you, Suzanne. Thanks very much indeed, Hazel, and, and indeed for that really great outline of the detail of the strategy, which uh, doubtless many of you will be salivating to get your hands on the uh, link for. Um, just a couple of things that have come up in the chat that I've been noticing, uh, an issue around pharmacy. Um, pharmacy is under a separate chief uh, professional officer, Keith Ridge, currently, who's about to retire. Uh, and as Beverly's noted in the, the chat, that as a profession, pharmacy are uh, working on a similar agenda, but it's not included here uh, because pharmacy is not within the, uh, the allied health community. It is a separate profession in its own right. Uh, also, some issues around resources, which I think Beverly again has responded to. Uh, and also, I think some issues around capacity. And I guess particularly for research colleagues uh, and clinical academic careers, is really important to refer back to our work on job planning um, and I think again thinking about job plans as our medical colleagues were particularly if you're in uh, a sort of middle career and indeed research career really important to to think about that with your trust we do have publications that can support job planning and that also again thinks uh, about some of those capacity issues which I know have come up in the the chat so thanks for your comments and I know that uh, both Hazel Beverly and I will take another look at those uh, afterwards in terms of the upcoming events that Hazel's described to you. So I guess from my perspective, it comes to, to the end of our presentation this morning to be the, uh, the bread, if you will, uh, of the meat that Beverly and Hazel have described to you. And I set the context in terms of those national documents in which this strategy is embraced. So things like the long-term plan and the other documents around uh, research. But also here, what I wanted to touch on is our upcoming new overarching strategy for England. As you know, AHP's into action, our first strategy was crowdsourced and indeed so is the case with our next strategy, which we're hoping to publish in May. And many of you will have engaged in that recent crowdsourcing process and you see here the initial project initiation plan uh, with timescales and just to say that we are uh, very much on course with that Janice St John Matthews who many of you will know is my current clinical fellow who is a, a doctoral uh, diagnostic radiographer who's currently writing up her dissertation and indeed landing our next strategy for which I am very grateful. Um, one of the issues that came up in this was really that a number of the issues from AHPs into action that were in our first strategy are still emerging. They're still developing, we, we can do more. And consequently, I'd really like to be clear this morning that those will be carried over into that next strategy, which we intend to publish in the spring. And we heard during the consultation, it was really important uh, from you that engaged with that, that, and they're going to be called enhanced foundations. And so those are actually on our next slide, please. So the enhanced foundations are that we will champion diverse and inclusive leadership. And I also noted a piece around uh, BME uh, leadership and also diversity in terms of EDI in the chat. So again, clearly that's really important. 
that we can further harness uh, digital and data, and also that AHPs are in the right place at the right time with the right skills. So that's really about the uh, thinking about that competence and segmentation and skill mix of our workforce. But really, really importantly, again, given the conversation we're having this morning, is that we commit to research, innovation and evaluation. So those are the enhanced foundations that will be in the next strategy leading on from AHPs Interaction that came out of that AHPs Listen crowdsourcing. Next slide, please. So I guess from my perspective in closing, it's really just to thank you for being with us this morning and to say goodbye on behalf of myself, Hazel and Beverly. But I really wanted to um, just re-emphasize re what Hazel mentioned. Uh, so if you could please now look at the full strategy document on the HE website, we will be sending a link uh, very shortly and it will be in the, the chat for you to share with uh, colleagues and stakeholders. <clears throat> And also uh, continue to watch uh, for additional information. Hazel mentioned there will be those upcoming uh, interactive webinars and also continue the conversation with us on social media. Uh, I did take a look briefly on Twitter and uh, one should never use the trending word uh, because otherwise one ends up being spammed on Twitter. But nonetheless, we were trending. Uh, so I have to say, how fabulous is it that AHP research at this stage in the morning is, is trending on Twitter? So I think from my perspective, it's been a really great morning. Again, I would like to pay tribute to the, the work particularly that Hazel has led, but also that was sponsored by Beverly. And I'm very grateful to the professional bodies and the Council for Allied Health Professions Research for this, and indeed for your participation this morning. So um, thank you for coming really delighted that this is here and it will be a foundation to our next strategy already that we, we have in place for the publication of the overarching strategy in May, but this is a really essential and important building block that we're all committed to uh, making sure that we implement and support you with your aspirations to better provide care uh, for our patients and our citizens we serve. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. <laughs>